वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला आई एम डॉक्टर नीरू टंडन फ्रॉम डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ इंग्लिश वी एस एस डी कॉलेज कानपुर वी आर डूइंग पेपर ऑन लिंग्विस्टिक्स एंड दिस मॉड्यूल नंबर सिक्सटीन हैज बीन रिटन बाय डॉक्टर अतानु साहा फ्रॉम जाधवपुर यूनिवर्सिटी कोलकाता The name of the module is categories and constituents. In this module, we'll define what is category. Categorization is described by the linguist. Then the notion of the part of speech and existence of the constituents in natural languages. One is expected in this module to learn the definition of category and various views on how categorization is described. by various other linguist as well alongside the notion of part of speech and the shortcomings of the traditional classification system are shown and the current view about categories and categorization draw much insight from the morphology of a particular language at one end and syntax on the other this idea also has given prominence to the fact that sentence of any language is not mere summation of words rather a group of words within a sentence act like a unit which is called a constituent finally some diagnostic tests are represented to prove the existence of the constituents in natural languages a category let us understand first what is a category a category is a minimal unit in syntax that selects a particular word or lexical item to be put under it for example nouns and verbs are called categories as they allow a proper noun or a pronoun to be inserted under the first one and only a verb under the later In other words a category comprises of a set of features which are responsible for distinguishing the words into the traditional word classes of noun verbs adjectives etc this is the definition given by edgar in 2002 according to raw the definition given by him in 2010 i quote categorizing is a fundamental aspect of how humans process reality and the formation of categories gives a structure to the enormous amount of sensory input unquote now lexical items that share properties are combined into the same category that we all know about it so a category essentially helps to capture the generalization of a particular type for example john him assassination would all be classified as nouns and reading putting and sleeping be classified as verbs now typological explanation on categories we can say that a variety of terminologies can be found including the terms parts of speech word classes form classes lexical categories grammatical categories and syntactic categories it was said that the word classes or the part of speech is another category by listing 10 traditional categories namely noun verb adjective adverb pronoun preposition uh, conjunction numeral article interjection etc the term part of speech has originated from latin pars orationis and often largely used by linguists to denote categories on the other hand the term word class was introduced in the first half of the 20th century by the structural linguists according to bloomfield a famous critic the term word class refers to the relationship between parts of speech and word classes in the following sense that means the maximum quantity of word classes of a given language are considered as the parts of speech of that language this simply indicates that the sets of parts of speech and word classes are not identical 
Now, syntactic views on categories should be taken care of. Categories are considered as syntactic categories. That is, technically this refers not only to lexical categories such as nouns and verbs, but also to phrasal categories such as noun phrases and verb phrases. Syntacticians primarily distinguish categories into lexical categories. For example, noun, verb and adjective that is given by Chomsky in 1981 and Baker in 2003. Noun, verb, adjective and preposition that was the post position and then noun, verb, adjective, adverb and preposition given by Redford in 1997 and others. Functional categories include complementizers, determiners, pronouns and auxiliaries. Cognitive linguist claims that the cognitive categories do not correspond to a set of entities featuring identical properties. They tend to exhibit a prototype structure. For example, according to this theory, bird is a prototype that would cover all the names of the birds in a given language. According to another critic, part of a speech acts like how a word is going to function in the sentence. The most common part of a speech discussed in descriptive grammars are nouns, verbs, adjectives, adverbs and prepositions. This triggers a pertinent question as in how do we classify them? Often the traditional definitions will fail to account for certain classifications. You can consider the following examples. The assassination of the prime minister and other one singing is a quality. Now these two underlined words cannot be classified as nouns if we delimit our notion of nouns as name of place object or a thing. Consider the example in front of you from Bangla. Now it is the small one is running. Normally we expect to see nouns occupying the subject position. In first, instead of a noun, an adjective has occupied the nominal position and it indicates that a word might change its category depending upon the position that is going to occupy in a sentence. In front of you, there is a chart and you can see that there are two sets of rules for categories. A grammar of any language is a combination of these categorical rules and lexical rules. For example, you see subject NP stands for noun phrase, VP stands for verb phrase, adjective is clear and other adverb and other auxiliaries are there to understand. As critic in 2002 Carney named Carney puts it, a constituent is a group of words that function together as a unit. For example, the girl likes John. In example above, we can see that the and girl are closely related and they are capable of forming one unit, the girl. Likewise, likes and John combine as a unit, John being the direct object of the verb. The verb is like and John is the direct object. So the girl likes John. These are three different parts. Now, in, see in this structure, we have got a subject, the noun phrase, verb phrase, the determiner, the girl, verb, likes and object is John that otherwise may be a noun. A set of nodes can combine into a unit called as constituent. A common node exhaustively dominates them. A is a constituent of B if B dominates A. How can one decide a combination of nodes as a constituent? That is a question in front of us. There are tests noted as test for constituency. One is replacement test. If a group words can be replaced by single word or lexical item, then the group of words will qualify as a constituent. This test is called as replacement test. The big red balloon is flying high in the sky. 
it is flying high in the sky since it can replace the entire unit the big red balloon so the big red balloon is stand as a unit namely an np constituent noun phrase constituent then there is another test in the name of stand alone or fragment test if a group words can be produced as an answer to a question then that group of words can form one constituent like john ate the roof top view restaurant where did john eat the answer to this question will be john ate at the rooftop view restaurant but not ate at or ate at the hence we can clearly say that at the rooftop view restaurant is a constituent if a group of words can be moved within a sentence then that will confirm the group as a constituent there are three kinds of movement test clefting which involves putting a string of words between it was or it is and a that at the beginning of the sentence preposing or the so called pseudo lefting involves putting the string of words before a is oblique r what or is oblique r who at the front of the sentence a new shirt mohan bought constituency hood can also be attested through passivization in case of passives the subject np and the object np interchange positions and it can establish them as constituents a new shirt was bought by mohan now it makes sense and it clearly just explains the correct communication of thought ellipsis test this is the another type of test we have ellipsis test is widely used for the constituency hood of the vp that is verb phrase in this test the verb phrase is dropped from the second clause and replaced with did to or so that is the reason this test is also called as did so test Subara went to the shop and Mohanty did it too. So instead of saying that Mohanty went to the shop too, we are saying Mohanty did it too. In the same way, Sita called Ram and Gopi uh, called Ram too. We can say that Sita called Ram and Gopi did so too. Now we have a coordination test. Coordinate structures are constituents linked by a conjunction like and or or. only constituents of the same syntactic category can be conjoined for example an np can be conjoined with another np and a vp with a vp but say not with an adgp adjective phrase the woman and the man went to the shop yesterday the woman went to the shop and bought ice creams the woman and the gray went to the shop yesterday the woman went to the shop and the purple a category is a minimal unit in syntax that selects a particular word or lexical item to be put under it lexical items that share properties are combined into the same category and according to the typologies parts of a speech comprises of 10 traditional categories namely noun verb adjective adverb pronoun preposition uh, conjunction numeral articles and interjection syntacticians primarily distinguish categories into lexical categories that is noun verb preposition and adjective cognitive view on categories entails that categories correspond to a set of entities featuring identical properties and they tend to exhibit a prototype structure part of a speech acts like how a word is going to function in the sentence and the current argument shows that the categories can be identified in terms of their morphological and syntactic distribution in a language there are certain rules like two sets of rules in grammar can explain the categories categorical rules and lexical rules a constituent is a group of words that functions together as a unit if a group words can be replaced by single word or lexical item then the group of words will qualify as a constituent this test is called as replacement test we have also discussed that if a group word can be produced as an answer to a question then this group of words can form one constituent 
in case a group of words can be moved within a sentence then that will confirm the group as a constituent constituency hood can also be attested through passivization we have discussed that ellipsis test is widely used for the constituency hood of the verb phrase and coordinate structures are constituents linked by a conjunction only constituents of the same syntactic category can be conjoined what are the hints for identifying particular types of constituents most students either get very good or bad marks in exams on syntax the main difference seems to be whether they have understood the principles summarized that i am going to tell you and can apply them when asked to identify constituents of a particular category in a sentence or to draw trees when you are there to identify the noun phrase if you can replace a constituent with a pronoun like she him they just take it for granted that it is a noun phrase if you cannot then it is probably not an np like all categories nps may consist of a single word for example pronouns are nps proper names like london france neeru mohit they are nps indefinite singular mass nouns or indefinite plurals can appear as a complete np even without the determiner like cows eat grass that these cases are not only nouns or pronouns but also nps can be demonstrated by the pronoun test like mary likes cows she likes them and also by the fact that these one word nps can appear in positions where one finds other nps for example in the subject position mary they visitors enjoyed the food the pps which describe a particular noun and occur just after are likely to be part of the np of which that noun is head if the pps are not included in the np then the np is incomplete the leader of the tribe agreed here the leader is not a complete np though this string might be an np in other sentences here the np is the leader of the tribe evidence that we can replace the leader of the tribe but not the leader with a pronoun he of the tribe agreed makes no sense for reasons not very clear some students write np at the top of the tree when asked to draw a tree for a sentence despite the lack of precedent for this given in the material they studied it should be clear that sentences are not the same kind of thing as np's for instance mary left expresses a situation and a preposition which is either true or false while the np in it mary denotes a person structures involving possessives always have the structure np and within brackets so if you see possessives you will automatically have two np's example np that is the main man near the door's wife note that np before possessives cannot be replaced by a pronoun this is because the pronoun plus possessive constituent is replaced by a possessive determiner like her car now how to identify the verb phrase most verb phrases begin with verbs the main class of exceptions include vps with adverb vps in front of the verb she slowly read the book you can deduce where the vp begins and ends with remembering that most sentences and all sentences that we'll discuss have one of the following two forms np and vp now how to identify prepositional phrases pps that we call the overwhelming majority of pps have the structure and the, there are some exceptions as well some beginners wrongly label prepositional phrases as noun phrases in three exercises perhaps due to an intuition that the noun inside the prepositional phrase is somehow more important and is thus the head this is refuted by the pronoun test for np's i sat on a chair can be changed to i sat on it but not i sat it how to identify adjective phrase ap's that we call adjective phrases can be either inside or outside the noun phrase they modify 
Typical example can be that person shouted at him. Now, APs never contain the noun they describe. Like person in above is not part of AP. If person were inside an AP, it would not be able to be the head of the whole NP constituent. Now, if you have to identify a phrase of a particular category, which is a prerequisite for drawing trees, you must obviously make sure that you have correctly identified the boundaries of any categories inside that category. If asked to identify a VP or a PP, in I looked at a book about politics, the correct answer would be I looked at a book about politics. Here at a book is not a PP and looked at a book is not a VP. Since about politics is part of the NP, inside these constituents, you can say I looked at it about politics. Just to summarize, I would like to draw your attention that you must understand clearly about constituents and categories. Once you understand that what is noun phrase, what is verb phrase and the way I told you how to identify the noun phrase and the verb phrase, then definitely it is going to benefit you and you are not going to commit mistakes in your exams. Whenever noun phrases and verb phrases, adjective phrases, phrasal verbs, they are there. Just put them into different categories and try to make practices with them. Try to do write certain words related with them according to the rules given in this particular module. You can watch this video which is coming up in the next slide for a better understanding of this module that is of constituents and categories and this will help you in having the complete understanding of this particular category. Thank you for visiting EPG Parchala. Hello and welcome to Syntax. The next couple of clips are dedicated to sentences, their structures and the function of those structures within the sentences. Syntax is basically the attempt to reconstruct native speakers' knowledge about sentences. We call the elements making up sentences constituents because they are what constitute the sentence. Sentences like, I live in a flat with very strange people who don't wash regularly, and my favourite roommate is a duck-billed platypus, on the lowest level consist of words. These words build phrases. A syntactic structure consisting of a head, which is a kind of main word, and dependent structures. These dependent structures follow the meaning of the head. Phrases combine to form clauses. In some cases, we would naturally feel that some elements belong together more than others, like in a small apartment, where we can naturally distinguish different areas and see, OK, the bed and bedside table are the recreational area, and the table next to the bookshelf must be the area dedicated to studying and all the cupboards filled with kitchen utensils must be the kitchen. The same works for sentences. In a sentence, elements such like my favourite roommate or a duck-billed platypus seem to belong together quite closely, similar to the furniture that we just talked about. In this case, we sum up the separate elements to a larger constituent, a constituent on a higher level similar to the furniture in particular areas that we can sum up to larger functional areas within the room. You might ask yourself how to distinguish whether words form a larger constituent. Luckily, linguists have come up with a number of tests to find out exactly that. The first test is the proform test. A proform is a form that can stand for pro something else. What you basically do is substitute a unit you are unsure about by another form. For example, my favourite roommate might be replaced by she, or very strange people could be replaced by they. If the unit can be replaced, then it is a constituent. The same as live and is can be replaced by the proform do. If you try the movement test, you try moving a unit to another place in the sentence. If you can move the unit, it is a constituent. For example, a duck-billed platypus is my favourite roommate. We can also do the question test. If you are unsure whether a unit is a constituent, you might also ask a WH question, asking for exactly that unit. For instance, what is the platypus? The answer would be my favourite roommate. Or who 
is my favourite roommate? A duckbill platypus. Finally, we have the elision test. If you can leave something out completely, it is a constituent. I live in a flat with very strange people is still a correct English sentence. What's important to remember with the elision test is that it only works for constituents that don't belong to the grammatical minimum of a sentence. Just remember that you always have to end up with a functioning sentence. Like in morphology, a unit in syntax falls apart into immediate constituents. English sentences have a subject predicate structure. Let's have a look at another example. Bold Bavarian Bertha gave him a black eye at the Oktoberfest. Since English sentences have subject predicate structure, this sentence would fall apart into two more parts on the next lower level. So the constituents on the next lower level can be summed up by two proform tests. She, Bold Bavarian Bertha, and did give him a black eye at the Oktoberfest. We call this a phrase marker. Every element within a phrase marker that other constituents can branch off from is called a node. S is the node that stands for sentence. She and did are immediate constituents of S as they lie one immediate level below in the hierarchy. They are dominated by S and because they lie on the same level, they are partners. A sentence may have multiple levels that keep splitting up into more nodes, but on each level, the immediate constituents are what matter. Very often, the constituent of one level splits up into two immediate constituents on the next lower level in the hierarchy, but not always. The larger constituents lie further to the top and the smaller constituents on each lower level make up the larger ones. This is why we speak of hierarchy. Remember what we said earlier on about the grammatical minimum and how in the elision test elements that are not part of the grammatical minimum can vanish and you are still left with a grammatically correct English sentence? The elements of a constituent that are necessary are called complements. Elements that are optional are called modifiers. It's time to summarize. Syntax is an attempt to reconstruct native speakers' inherent knowledge about sentences. Sentences consist of words, which build phrases, which build clauses. These are elements of a sentence, and these elements are called constituents. We automatically feel that some elements belong together more closely than others. So larger constituents lie at a higher level in the hierarchy and consist of smaller elements at a lower level. To find out which elements build larger constituents, we talked about a couple of tests. The proform test, the movement test, the question test, and the elision test. It's always better to do more than one test just to make sure which elements belong to the constituents. Phrase markers are a way to illustrate how sentences are made up of immediate constituents. The subject predicate structure of English allows the sentences to be split up into two immediate constituents on the next lower level. We also talked about complements and modifiers. Complements are elements that are compulsory within the sentence to make it correct. And modifiers are elements that are not necessary within the sentence and can be left out. Right, we've reached the end of the first syntax clip. Next time we will be talking about structures and functions within sentences.